this section of the lecture i would like to discuss about different programming parameters so in the first section that we learn so that and now we see the different programming paradigms available in the world to do programming. So what is programming? So programming is the way we give instruction to the machines, what we call it as computers, to do their work. So from the history to right now, we use different type of programming languages to give those instructions. So we will see now in this session what kind of languages are available to do programming and each language how do you pass those instructions. Without giving instructions to the computers, computers may not be able to solve problems. The history, the first programming language in the world called assembly. Assembly usually call it as a machine language. Each computer processor consists of set of machine languages it has. So these are the basic fundamental instructions which that computer can execute or that computer understood. So if we want to solve a problem with this particular machine, we must use those instructions and instruct the computer the way to solve the problem using those basic instructions. We call it as assembly code. Assembly code consists of a three letter instruction name and they are Argument for what we call it as inputs. So, for example, there might be instruct. There is instruction called add, jump, like that. So each instruction has a direct code corresponding these instructions. So there is a code which clearly represents these instructions. So you know in the computer, everything is binary, ones and zeros. The machine or the CPU knows finally those ones and zeros. Those ones and zeros, with these ones and zeros, we have a set of instructions built to those machines. So each instruction or this code match to this assembly code. So there is a program written using those machine instructions to convert this code to the instruction. So instead of giving our instruction to the computer using zeros and ones, now we can give the instruction to our computer using this machine code or what you call assembly machine. Instead of machine code, now we can give instruction using assembler. Assembler is little bit meaningful of three letter code which we can use instead of machine code to give the instruction to the computer. So then the code we write, assembly code, need to be converted to the machine code. And then that machine code executes in the machine. So that's how the assembler code works. So after this very fundamental programming language called assembler, different researchers had built differing, different programming languages to the world in order to be struck the computer. So those language has plus and minus points but all of them consist of basic concepts like sequence, iterations, inputs, outputs, and so on. So all the programming languages in the world, we can divide into four groups, but we call it as imperative programming languages, functional programming languages, 
object-oriented programming languages and logic programming languages. Language like Pascal, C, C++ comes under imperative. And then uh, C++, Java comes like, again, object-oriented. C++ we can divide under object-oriented plus imperative both. Because object-oriented is kind of imperative, I will let you know. And then we have a logic programming language such as Prolog and the declarative programming languages such as kind of uh, SQL and so on. And then uh, functional programming languages uh, such as uh, uh, Lips, uh, Scala and so on. So basically imperative and the declarative is kind of two and two types and there are logic, functional and so on. So we will see a few of them and what it means. Imperative programming. In the imperative programming, we tell the computer how to do it one by one. So in the first session, I discussed that. So using Scratch, we tell the computer how to do it one by one, edit play, store it, display it, like that. But in the other side, declarative programming languages, what we say, what is to be done? So these are two major categories, imperative and declarative. In the imperative language, we have to give instruction to the computer how to do the thing. In the declarative languages, what we have to tell the computer, what is to be done? So object-oriented languages can be considered in imperative plus declarative sometimes. And logic programming languages are kind of entirely declarative. The functional programming languages are also called as declarative languages and so on. What is functional programming? Functional programming is built on what we call functions, it's kind of derived from mathematics. Each function in the programming language has inputs and outputs. When you give an input, functions do some processing and produce output. So if you give a same input, every time it produces the same output. That call it as a pure function in the function programming language. There are no side effects. In the functional programming paradigm, we divide our problem into small set of functions. And each function has some action or some in, uh, functions take some inputs and produce some outputs. So you might learn functional programming later on. So in the object-oriented programming concepts, we combine data into the instruction. So there, are, it, the concept called it as encapsulation. So we encapsulate, include the data also into the instruction. So object-oriented language might be imperative or declarative. So nowadays, object-oriented programming style is much popular, but there is now uh, who we can see towards the functional programming as well. But in this course, we only learn imperative or the declarative programming language. In addition to that, the main declarative programming language are kind of logic programming. Logic programming are completely declarative. So they are what we say what we want. The prog uh, program itself decides how to do it. But in the imperative language, we tell, need to tell the system how to do it one by one. So we will learn that first. So when you think about evaluation of computer programming languages in the world, start from machine code to the assembler and then see 
Fortran, C++, Java, Scala, Ruby, and thousands of programming languages now in the world. Among them, at present, most popular programming language seems to be JavaScript because of the web development. So most of the websites, web applications, backend and frontend, both now, most of the times, developed by JavaScript. The PHP is the scripting language, you know, which used on the backside. JavaScript, PHP, both kind of imperative programming language. JavaScript use some kind of objects as well, object orientation. And like SQL, so they are what we saw. It's a declarative why we say what, what we want. Like select data and so on. The computer decides how to execute that. And then nowadays Python programming language is getting popular. We can code it like object oriented or functional or like declarative. Different styles supported by Python. It's now getting really popular with data science applications and so on. The C is the most historical programming language which you introduced to the world after as in the but as you may see, still it used heavily, especially the, most of the operating systems are written by C. Nowadays, you know, so we are working with IoT, Internet of Things, embedded devices, and so on. So there we use C. Using C, we can write the code more close to the machine. And we can give a clear instructions in the imperative way, one by one. It's very, very close to the machine instruction. In addition to that, you know, there are so many other languages, new languages coming up like Go, Scala, Haskell, Objective-C, and so on. So those different languages come and go. And some languages remain. So one of the lang programming languages remains from the history to present is C. So like 1960s to 2020, over 80 years C survived. And I personally believe the C may never disappear in the world. As long as computer science in the world, the C will exist. Computer scientists need efficient program which close to the machine, then C is the child. So because of that, this course we use C to teach you the programming concept. Later on you might use some other languages to learn different styles of programming. So similarly, you know, when you want to learn how to drive a car, so usually those driving institutes have very old forest miners and very old wagons. And why people are using this to drive. After you drive with this old vehicle, driving a new modern car is a very simple task. So similarly, if you learn programming with C, Using the other programming language is just simple task. So we use C to teach programming. So some of you in this class may not familiar with programming. So then you might ask how to do programming. So how do you kind of learn programming? There are no passive way of learn programming. Just listening this video, you may never will learn programming. So if you want to learn programming, you have to practice. You have to code it. You have to write the code, execute, and run the code. So by giving a command, you cannot this 
You cannot destroy a computer. Some students are afraid to try it out in the computer. So they might think the computer may screwed up or computer may damage. No, no, no. The computer are machines. You can give whatever instructions. If they can understand it, they will execute that. If not, they might return error. So then you just ignore that or you just correct it and try it back. Without trying or without practicing, you never be able to learn programming. It's similar, you cannot learn swimming without jumping into the water. Similarly, you cannot learn programming without programming or without practice it. So in this course, I will teach problem solving, not C, but I use C to do teach problem solving. So in order to learn C, I have published some courses via this NetCAD uh, portal, Cisco NetCAD Network Academy portal. During your orientation, I have enabled the C programming course for you. So I wish most of you have followed this course. If not, kindly follow it. Since all of you are at home, so please spend your time to follow the C course, which I enable to learn C. In addition to that, I have enabled a set of Linux courses for you during the orientation. You must follow that. Linux skills and the C skills which you develop in these days will be very valuable in the future. Those skills are the skills you can demand or you can be used or live your life comfortably. So what I do in this course to teach how to solve the problem, I am not going to teach you C. I use C to teach you how to program. So you understand, I think you understand what I mean. So kindly follow Network Academy C course to learn C, then follow my lectures to learn how to solve problems using C. Okay, so I guess you follow this lecture course. So far at least to some extent, I will check that. So from the next session on Word, I will start teaching you how to solve problems with a simple introduction to C. If you want detail, again, I, I introduction or detail knowledge about C. Again, I highlight kindly follow Network Academy, Cisco Network Academy C course, which we have enabled. Thank you. That's it. This short session, which introduces you different programming paradigm. So, in order to solve the problems, this course we use imperative programming that we have to tell the computer what how to solve this problem. So later on, we know declarative programming paradigms such as functional programming. They are what we tell the computer what we need. That's you have to understand. There are mainly two types of solving problems in the computer science. The first time we tell the computer using flowcharts and developing algorithms how to do it one by one, step by step. So the other we tell the computer what we need and then computer will decide how to do that. So these are the two styles. Okay. With that, we will conclude the session, this session. So in the next session, I'll discuss give a simple introduction to C and start to use C as or to teach you how to solve problems using C. Okay.